Welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials and in today's tutorial we're going to do an updated version of the Easy Excel dashboard video that I have done previously. In this video what I'm going to show you how to do is have multiple athletes and multiple KPIs on the same dashboard so I'm going to be able to select any athlete that I want and the exercises that I'm tracking and have the exercise KPE tracking chart automatically update. This is going to be really useful if you are mo monitoring multiple things with your athletes and need to see them visualized on the same chart. So let's get after it. Okay, so if you remember from Strength Coach Tutorials number 48, um, this is the, the chart that we ended up finishing off with. What we had was we have the bench press and the squat and those are both um, graphs based on that. And then we have the slicers where we're actually able to choose sort of any athlete and any date that we want to look at. And then we can clear the filters if we want to be able to look at all of the dates at the same time. Now. In the comments of that video, I received a question about how can I actually have, say, the bench press and the squat or whatever KPIs I'm sort of looking at on the same graph while being able to use the chart to sort of choose between them <clears throat> and allow me to make comparisons between the two movements and um, look at them in a different way. So that's what we're going to tackle today um, in Strength Coach Charles number 57. Um, we're going to put both of these KPIs on the same chart and be able to have slicers to choose between them. So on to 57, if you'll remember, this is the actual data that we ended up with from Strength Coach Tutorials 48, and um, this is what the data looked like. Now in order to put both of the KPIs on the same chart, we're just going to have to restructure our data a little bit so that Excel, when it's reading it from the charts, um, makes it look a little bit different. So we're gonna do that right now. <clears throat> Basically what we're gonna do is change around sort of the column order and then have some different formulas in here to pull out certain data. So the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna separate the bench and the squat 1RMs. And an easy way to do that is I'm just gonna take this column and I'm gonna drag it over beside the squat RM. And I'm gonna highlight these yellow because I'm gonna be putting a formula in there when I actually go to creating my chart. And I'm going to need another column. So I'm gonna insert a column to the left. So how all I've done is in my table, I just right click, insert table columns to the left. And I'm gonna actually term this exercise. And what this is gonna be is where I'm going to keep track of whether the athlete performed the bench press or the squat. And then, when I'm tracking my actual weight and reps, I'm not gonna track them based on the actual movement. I wanna just track weight and reps. So I'm gonna change these around to be weight and reps. Hit okay. And then I'm not, I'm not gonna even need this column here. So, this is what my data is gonna look like. Um, and then the last kind of column that I'll need is just a column where I'm actually gonna track what the actual 1RM is. And then type that in there. When I'm setting up the data columns, this is what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna track whether the athlete performed a bench press or a squat, the weight and the reps that they performed, and then what the 1RM is, and then I'm gonna pull that into this chart here based on what they've actually performed. So I'm gonna clear the data out of here. I have some data that I'm gonna load in from the intro video. So let me clear these filters. I'm gonna load all of this data in. So I'm gonna go back to my video and just paste this in. So what have I pasted in? We have basically the athlete name, the date that the exercise was performed on, and then if it was a bench press or a squat, or we can put any exercises we want in here, the weight that they lifted, the reps that they performed, and then the 1RM. If you've seen some of my previous videos on 1RM calculations in Excel, this column could be a calculation cell where we are just taking the weight and the reps and automatically calculating the 1RM. That's an easy kind of calculation and I have a previous video on how to do that. For these columns here, what we need to do now is actually pull in the 1RM based on whether or not the exercise was a bench press or was a squat. So we're gonna use an if function equals if, and what I wanna look for is if the actual exercise um, cell equals quotations bench press, quotations, and then if it does, what I wanna pull in is the 1RM cell. So 
Unfortunately, the, the um, formula is getting written over the cell, but all I've done is highlighted the 1RM cell. And if you'll notice, we're using a table reference, the at and then the 1RM column. So the at symbol means the cell on that current row. And then if it doesn't, I just want it to be empty. And I'm gonna close that off. And when I type that in, what you're gonna notice is that it's actually pulled in all the 1RM values if this equals bench press. And we're gonna do the same thing for squat. So I'm actually gonna just copy the formula, control C, and then paste that in, control V. And instead of bench press, I want it to look for squat. And we'll know that it works because wherever there's a not a bench press value, there should be a squat value. So again, that formula is just if the exercise equals bench press, then we wanna pull in the 1RM cell. If not, we put double quotations, which means we wanna leave it empty and then hit enter and it should go all the way down. And because this is a table, we formatted this as a table, it's actually going to um, automatically put the cell or the uh, formula all the way down. But if it didn't, what you could do is just take this cell and in the bottom right corner, there's a little box icon. And if I just take that, I'm able to drag the formula all the way down and it'll automatically put it in every cell. And because we're using dynamic references, when I actually go into any cell, you can see that it's referencing the cells in the same row so that the formula is always accurate. So I'm gonna hit enter there. So now that we have those values sort of figured out, what we can do now is start to create the chart. So I want the whole date column <clears throat> and I want the bench press 1RM column and I want the squat 1RM column. And all I've done while I'm selecting those is hold down the control button and that allows me to select separate columns. And I'm going to go to insert and then we'll go to recommended charts and you can see it's giving me a couple different types of charts. I'm gonna choose this one here, the line chart, because it looks the best to me. I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see we're gonna call this exercise KPI tracking. That is basically the chart that we end up with, but those values don't look very good to me. So you can see that what Excel is doing is there's a value of zero here. So let, let's actually put a slicer on this. So hold on one sec. Let's go to back to our table and we'll put a slicer on it. So all I've gone is table design, insert slicer, and let's put one around the athlete name. So now when we slice this chart, and if we remember what slicers do, they actually hide cells. So I'm gonna move this down so that it doesn't get hidden when we use it. And I'll scroll down. So there's our chart. So let's slice this up and go to athlete one. <clears throat> so in essence, what we've done now is I've selected athlete one and we're actually looking at their chart. But what you can see that Excel's doing is every time there is a zero in our chart, or in this case, a no value, um, it's actually giving us just a line that goes right along the bottom. And if we know anything about 1RM type testing, we know that when you are not exercising or when you have not tested it, your 1RM does not go to zero. It probably stays around the same or maybe goes a little bit down, but for our purposes, like a straight line, just saying that it would be the same would be appropriate. So what we, what we need to do here is make it so that Excel doesn't take um, the values and give them a value of zero. So let's go back to our chart here or our actual table, we're gonna apply another formula. And what we wanna do here is anytime that there is not a value in the cell, we wanna just give it a value of NA and then tell the chart to treat the NA value as a gap in the data and just connect the lines. So at the end here, instead of these double quotations, I'm gonna put hashtag N slash A and hit okay. And what you can see is now it's added an error value basically in between each one. And I'm gonna do the same thing in the squat, hashtag N slash A, hit okay. And it's added the error value. And what do you know, right away it's cleaned up that chart quite a lot. So you can see now Excel's reading it as an error and just connecting the data. And if we were to look at either athlete one or athlete two, based on the values, we can see that their data has changed quite significantly. So that cleaned the chart up quite a lot. So what I'm gonna do is select both of these with the control button and right click cut them. And I'm gonna put them on our visualization sheet. 
So I'm just gonna hit Control V and we'll paste those in there. And we just have to add a few more slicers to this and then clean up the graph and it'll look really nice. So we'll go back to our chart here and I'm gonna add just two more slicers. I'll go to Table Design, Insert Slicer and I wanna add one around the exercise and the date and hit OK. And then I'm gonna cut both of those, right click, cut, paste those on our video visualization sheet and I'll just paste them kind of in order here. And if we wanna change those around, all I do is click them with the control button held down and I'm going to select, and let's just change the color on those maybe a little bit so we can choose them that way. And I don't know, that just looks a little bit better. And let's change this chart around a little bit. So if I click on the chart and go to chart design, there's a few different options. And if, as you hover over them, it'll show you what the chart's going to look like. So we have this one that maybe has the values at each spot or this one. I usually like this one with the double lines. And then let's highlight our series and right click format data series. And we'll go to the paint bucket icon. I'm gonna make the squat, I'm gonna make that red and I'm gonna give it a marker. So I'll go to marker options, built in. I'm gonna give it the diamond marker and hit okay. But I'm gonna make the marker red as well. And then I'm gonna do the other one. I like that in blue and I'm gonna give it another marker. Same thing, I'm gonna give it that diamond marker and hit okay. So you can see now in just a few minutes, we have a chart that better reflects our data and we should be able to select any athlete, any exercise and be able to filter those results out. Maybe we just wanna look at a few key testing dates and we're able to kind of do that easily. We also have the markers in there so that we can tell when there's long stretches where we didn't collect any additional data, but it's just one marker to the next. And that's just a really easy way you can start to put together athlete KPI dashboards with some slicers and some charts, and you can sort of customize this to be really whatever you want. My one recommendation is that if you're doing this method, put all of your visualizations and slicers on a different sheet because what's happening to the actual table is that it's just hiding all of the cells that don't correspond to the values that are selected in the slicers and what that does is if you actually have your charts in cells that are being hidden it moves them all around and it'll hide the charts in some cases and it just gets really messy so do all of your visualizations um, on a separate sheet and you shouldn't run into any of those problems and then for slicers if you want to um, refresh those or just clear them there's an x button up in the top corner here and you can just click that and it'll put everything back to normal so that's a easy way to create a excel dashboard and i hope this trick helps you out and if it did please like and subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and i will see you in the next video